Hi, my name is Marina Kuzmenko and uh, today we have our next conversation at Actfluencers. Our project Actfluencers is about inspirational women in sustainable agriculture. It's my big pleasure to welcome today um, a promising lady who is already um, almost finished her PhD in plant pathology and also she is a founder of the startup called Ufami in Nigeria. She is inspiring more Nigerians to join sustainable agriculture. This is my pleasure to welcome Kafilat Adedeji. Hi, Kafilat. Hello. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Kafilat, you have so many projects in your portfolio as uh, influencer and as a person who is doing agriculture technologies business. So. Uh, how did you start everything? This is going to be a very long conversation, but I'll try to cut it as short as possible. So I'll be brief as much as possible. I'll really, I'll really, really cope. And <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. Okay, so basically, it's it sprang from the agriculture. My agricultural background is from my academics, mm -hmm. like um, right from my degrees, 2005 to 2010, undergraduates, everything is ag agriculture. I studied agronomy in a graduate level, I had a, I graduated with a first class in agronomy. So being a first class, first class graduate is actually the first thing that um, give me that challenge to work in the agricultural sector. Now, um, the educational background in my country, in my university is more of um, um, theoretical based and practical based. But I got a first class, so it's a challenge on my part because I have to be able to defend my certificate and you know agriculture it has to be practical so I, I wouldn't want to give any excuse that uh, my school only teach us um theory they didn't teach us practical so um i'll start giving that excuse for my failure in the field no 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 so i have to go extra mile to go garner the practical skills so i should i should i'll be able to defend my certificate and that was the first year of practicing agriculture for me coincidentally i was born into a farming family Right from my parents, my grandparents, like we own a family farm. It has what always they, been. Did you, what did they grow uh, as a farmers? We grow crops basically from plantain to vegetables. <laughs> we make beds ourselves. We eat, we grow the vegetables we eat for our family sustainably and we sell the remaining ones. That's basically it. Like our vegetables, our plantain. The often, oh, uh, uh, furthermore, we actually have a fish, map, fish farm, earthen fish pond. That is more of a business side. That's agriculture. We do more of that for business sake. But for the vegetables, for the plantain, and all of that, that is basically for our family consumption. We only have to sell the excess. So basically, that's what we are passionate about doing that, not just um, maybe for business or anything. It's just because we are born into that family. My parents inherit from their grandparents, and it has become a culture. So basically, so um, I would now say like um, I now I was coincidentally I, I was fortunate to go study agriculture again in the university, though it was actually not my part of my plan. Mm -hmm. I only made the resolution in my second year that uh, if I'm not going to cross over to medicine. I wanted to study medicine that I'm going to stay here in agronomy and become the best student. When I know that I actually merited crossing over to medicine. I, I, I had all the CGPA, I, I had all the grades for me to cross over to that department and everything is still working against me not to be in medicine. So I had to say, fine, maybe perhaps this is what just God wants me to do. So if I'm not going to, for, to medicine yeah, yeah. because of the opportunity that I'm not granted, then I should be able to bring out the best in agronomy. And that was just a resolution for me. And eventually I graduated with a first class. So um, having graduated with the first class, the challenge for me now is to be able to defend my certificate by being practically oriented. And luckily for me, from a, a background of farming as a family, I had my IT industrial training in um, agricultural projects, um, uh, farms, but, uh, government farms around. So I was able to garner practical skills. Eventually, my service year, because in Nigeria, when you have a graduate, after your graduate, your first work experience, you'll be posted to, a, to another state to have an industrial experience. They call it service, national youth service. So you have to, you have one year to do that in Nigeria. So luckily for me, most people, they are usually posted to schools to go and teach. But luckily for me, I was posted into an irrigation basin, basin project, Bacolori Irrigation Basin Project, which is a rice farm by the federal government of Nigeria. 
in Zamfara State. So mm -hmm. it's actually a big project. They use irrigation to farm rice. So I was being posted to uh, be the assistant intake officer in the units for G rice, uh, uh, rice um, farmers. So mm -hmm. that's another bunch of experience for me. And I have one good year to be in that um, organization. So that was my first big experience in the agricultural sector. We had to work with local farmers, I had to uh, supply them improved seeds, I have to um, supply them um, good technology to farm their rice under my supervisor and all of that. So at that point, I had to take up my own personal projects too within that um, um, irrigation basin organization. I had my own 0 0.2 hectares farmland where I also co cultivate my own rice as my own private business project while also monitoring other farmers. So that, has, that was actually my first experience. So I had to leave after my one year service, so which made me not to be able to conclude the whole project in my presence. So I feel like, part of my sorry for interrupting. Was it challenging for you after the university? Just start uh, the real life, the real practice, and grow rice. Uh, do you remember like first impression, first challenge? What it what it was? The first challenge was when I had to leave and I had to say, people manage my rice farm for me. You know, I had invested everything. On, the only thing left is the fact that they have to invest my rice for me. And there's a language, there was a, there was a language barrier. We do not speak the same language. Different part is different states in my country. So managing the workers was easy for me while I was there because I used my supervisors. But now that I'm not there anymore, that was the hand. So I couldn't get anything from my rice farm. That was the first challenge I had. So I actually thought because I was farming in absence, I was not there to monitor. And number two, the language barrier. Number three, the basic problem again, which is number three, is me being a female because the male do not want to respect me. They don't want to listen to me. And so even if I had to uh, talk to tomorrow, iron hand that you have to provide me with my harvest. What I, I paid you, they wouldn't want to listen to me because I'm a female. So that 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 I would say that was actually the major challenge out of the three challenges I faced in seeing the um, breakthrough of that project. Mm -hmm. Okay, going forward after um, my service year, six months, my first um, paid employment was actually as an assistant farm manager in a private farm, and the farm is uh, the largest supplier of mushrooms to shop rights in Nigeria. I don't know if you know shop rights. ShopRite is a very big mall in Nigeria and South Africa. So um, this farm that I work with as the assistant farm manager supply mushroom to them. And they're actually the largest supplier of mushrooms. So I work in this farm um, for six months, actually, as the assistant farm manager. So that, that, that was actually another plus for my agricultural experience, which was actually a good one for me. Because in that farm, they actually want to practice organic farming, mm -hmm. something like a replica of what we have in Songhai. <laughs> Farm. I don't know whether you know Songhai Farm in the New Republic. Mm -hmm. Songhai, Songhai Farm in the New Republic. So that was the model the farm wants to work on, practical organic farming. Mm. Oh, so uh, basically, that was where I had my organic farm experience, and that was actually what keep opening my eyes to the agricultural sector, practicing in the field. Because I keep gathering experience, and I wouldn't just want this experience to waste. I see. Kafilat, and uh, regarding your experience uh, on that assistant position, so your boss was male or female? You were supporting him as assistant. Who it was? It was male or female? My boss was a male. male. I have two males as boss. <laughs> this, this, this was another hell of problem for me. In a farm of uh, three learned workers, female you, you you can't imagine that uh -huh. in a farm a big farm of three skilled workers um graduates and um seven unskilled workers i was the only female that was another hell that was another hell for me I, again i was this um, i'm a, i'm this kind of person that is very transparent and open for everything you spend on the farm i have to take accounts for it like i'm very very accountable for everything and that became that made me become a threat to my boss. I would say that. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know that? Like, why did you have to spend this? You have to be accountable. <laughs> I had to write everything down. You understand? Maybe because I'm a female or maybe because of my personality, it's made me become a threat to my boss. And I would say this was actually a problem, though I was, um, I was favored by my employer 
because uh -huh. of that attitude. But my immediate boss, I had to report to because I'm the assistant farm manager. My farm manager took this as a threat. You get the point. <laughs> so yeah. that, that, that actually did not even made me to stay so much in that farm because actually I was working, I was, I was, um, I was earning money and I was forging my education as my master's, but I wasn't deriving that pleasure because the fact that my farm manager is not happy with me, despite the fact that my employer is happy with me. So I understand. I understand this problem. interpersonal relationship. It's always not so easy. Yes. Uh, and what is the way between when you are the uh, managing assistant and then you have you farming? Uh, how did you get the idea to go to your own? I understand why probably because I am on the same board. <laughs> but how how did you get this power inside of you just to start you farming? It's it's just um, resonates to my personality again. I I would say I'm very stubborn. Like I'm uh -huh. this go getter. Uh huh. Like stubborn in the good way i want this thing until i i get it i have to get it uh -huh. except i get i see a challenge on the way and that says you are not going to see this at all because then i have to i have to go back but i have to do everything in my power to get it so basically for me um starting my own organization is for me to be fulfilled like i really want to be in control i really want to be able to create my own world like people say this thing is not possible i want to break that barrier i want to disrupt the system i want to do okay. things that people say is not possible everybody has been telling me you're a female you can do this my husband tell me my father tell me you can do this you're a female you're a female i just want to do it i want to see what will happen when i do it yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get the point so basically that, that, that that's actually uh, that's actually what, what made me but actually but starting an organization for me because of my openness uh-huh um, my personal attitude, the good that I've also done, I would say that in the organization I've worked with, it's helped me to get like mind, like mind to be willing to work with me. In fact, the, basically most of my empl employees, I mean, most people that work with me, they are volunteers. I pay them no money and they are willing, to, happy to work with me. Mm -hmm. So like it makes me, it makes many people willing to work, work, work with me for free without me paying them a dime. I hope you get the point. So that has been the energy for me. Even when I have every um, reason to say I'm quitting this thing, this thing is very challenging. I'm not doing it anymore. Those people that surround me give me the go ahead to keep pushing, to keep pushing. Until recently, I, I would say this year, it, 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 I started having structures and all of that because I, I'm, I'm, I'm opportune to um, be trained by different business um, um, incubating, incubation uh, um, programs mm -hmm. like um, the... Um, Autumn School, German School of Sustainable Entrepreneurship, the ASA Autumn School, um, like the Netherlands uh, Incubation Program, Orange Corners, Nigeria. So these are international organizations that, have, that are giving me good training that is making me to structure my organization to meet up with the global, um, global world like build it to an international level, which is actually my vision for my organization. T tell us about your vision, vision which you want to, uh, to raise uh, in front of people who uh, come to your farm. So what is your vision? My vision is to see people farm on their limited urban space and hand a decent living. Many people see farmers as bad people in the society, as people that are unskilled, as dirty people or a dirty job. I want people to be able to farm and earn a decent living, like irrespective of whatever resources they have at their disposal. That is my vision. So the world become a better place for everyone. Like the farming job that they take as a work, it, they should be able to earn a decent living and be able to, uh, people should be able to respect them for that. Farmers should take their good place in the society, not to be seen as dirty people in the society or people that are unlearned or unskilled. No, I want people to be able to farm on their limited urban space with little or no resources, free of chemicals and any decent living doing that particular thing they are doing. That is and, my vision. Um, uh, Kafilat, and how many uh, people do you have in your team? Who are supporting you with doing all projects in your you farmers? Right now we have um, volunteers up to seven, and we have um, um, paid employee um, for now one 
permanent, then I have uh, two contract staff, okay. excluding myself and my partner. And uh, returning to the point when you started your family, what was the challenge for starting? Because yes, you were still in male dominated industry, you were still uh, among males, but what other challenges did you face? The challenges number one is no, I, I actually did not have any business knowledge. I was only coming into agricultural place based on my passion based on my experience working in farms, based on my expertise as an agronomist, as a master's in plant biology, as a PhD student. I was just going there for passion's sake. I didn't have, ze I have zero knowledge for business. So that was one major challenge for me because I teach people, I say I'm doing business and it's not sustainable because they just take the idea and go, go out and launch it as a business. And I am there, not any anything for what I do because I'm just doing it for passion's sake. So I would say that was the greatest challenge. The second challenge for me is the fact that um, as a female, I have to um, attend to family needs. I had to get married. Getting married for me, I changed location. I could not carry my land. I could not carry my farm land. I had to start all over again, building a farm in an urban space in a city where there is no farmland. So like I'm doing what is impracticable. And I could not stop because I had grown to some extent. I could not say I'm stopping farming totally. I had built the expertise, I had built the traction, but I just changed location because I relocated, I got married. So it's like I'm starting all over again. So that was another major challenge for me. And I would say number three challenge is the fact that I'm a female. I'll, say, I'll keep saying this, I'm a female, I have this weakness of um, the, my, my, my competitors, which are guys, they say, they want 5 million or 10 million naira, they go for it. I would be timid as a female. I say, even if I see 5,000 naira, I'm okay. Uh, when uh, and my competitors know that it's going to be 10 million naira that will make this project. I, because of my female and passiveness, I will say, I can do with 5,000 naira. I can manage 5,000 naira. And eventually the money will not be enough. I will not build anything for me. So it made me have financial problems and not be able to um, build to sustainably, not thinking the end. Why starting? All because of my limitation. I, I hope I'm able to answer that question. God. And where did you get funding? Did you apply for any kind of scholarship or any uh, grants? Or how do you advise other women in, in similar circumstances to get funding to start their business? Okay, so for me, I at the point I did not even... I keep applying for scholarships, but I didn't get scholarship opportunity. But I had to be strategized because um, UFAMI is basically on two categories, um, product level and service level. The products we sell, organic farm inputs, and the service we, we teach people um, in terms of courses and sell farming courses to them. They come to train on our farms and all of that. So the idea is for me to build the farm first so that people can come to my farm and say, this is a farm that is working then we want to come and learn. But that didn't work for me because I don't have the funding to build a farm of that um, taste I actually wanted that people will be attracted to. So I had to re-strategize and I use technology, I leverage on technology. So I started from my strengths, which is the knowledge and the skills that I've acquired in schools and all the farms that I had worked for. So I started training first. So I did backward integration. So started training first and I use technology so I, I can I train people basically on WhatsApp, on Telegram, without having a physical farm. But using the farming knowledge, the expertise I've learned from different farms I had worked for, you understand? So I was able to tell them, to teach them farming, and I was able to gather um, 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 p um, funding from there because I charge a little for teaching in that um, platform I created. So it is now that money that I garnered from teaching that I now use to build the farm. Do you see the backward integration? So when I now was able to build the, fa uh, the farm to gain traction, last year I started applying for funding. Do you understand? And yes. presently now we've been able to get um, um, if, if a $5,000, yes. I still work with funding opportunity. Kafilat, and also a question about, you told the lack of knowledge how to do business. Where did you get this knowledge to start? So I started applying for business incubation program. And because I don't have money to fund myself to Harvard Business School, I was looking for business incubation program that were free, that, that, that were on scholarship. So I started applying for that. Even if I did not get grants, I got free um, business incubation program that I was able to enroll 
to learn free of charge and top notch for that matter. So I've been able to train with some um, three business schools. Um, last year was Autumn School of Sustainable Entrepreneurship, which was in Ghana. That was by German um, German African Exchange Program. Uh, well, that was a very good one. In fact, it's one of it's the best of all the ones that I had one with Microsoft. I had another one with um, Accelerate Trap, which is the Future Award Africa. Okay, so basically I'm on my third one now, which is with, which is with the Netherlands. So this 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 one I have now is both a, a um, um, training business training at the same time with funding attached to it, unlike the ones I've been doing before, which is just strictly business training. So right now I'm I'm, I'm doing a, the one that has business training alongside funding, which makes it a double win for me. But while starting out, I got business um, trainings, and that was what had made me to gather the right business experience. Kafilat, and also um, I have a question: Where did you get all this energy and inspiration not to give up, just move ahead? How do mm. you inspire yourself, or maybe someone else is inspiring you? The restless was maybe I would say restless has been built into my DNA. I would say that personally, I'm all, the one. It has always been people. Uh, my my daddy not giving up on me, talking to me if I make any mistake. It doesn't allow me to just go away with any mistake. It made me realize that Kafilat, you have made a mistake. And like every now and then they keep talking to me. And because I want to become a good person, I see that talking to me, that um, 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 scolding me, so to say, as something that made me improve upon myself. So I had to seek anyhow way for me to be able to uh, kind of, I know what I wanted to do was, was good but my father would not understand so he was crying about it and i don't want to offend my father so i was looking for every way every strategy to become a better person to him so that he would be convinced and say that i'm actually doing the right thing that, that's one thing number second thing is i'm a muslim a, a muslim that covers my body i mean that covers my that was that's another problem to me in the society society see me as somebody that because i'm covering my head i don't have anything to offer the society they look down upon me you know Despite the fact that I'm a learned person, I've traveled, you understand, they still not see me and not convinced because of my appearance. So I want to change that perspective. That I want to change that um, wrong perspective that people look at me in. So I already have that, that thing inside me that I want to, whatever you think that you're seeing me that I'm not doing right, I want to be able to convince you that I'm a good person. I want to be able to convince you that I want you to see the right person of me. So that has been the way I've been I've been growing. So I had it, I, I, I just adopted that same strategy for my business. Do you understand? So it's like resilience and building that resilience has become part of my life. And that is just what has made me to what I, what I am today. Thank you. Thank you, Kafilat, for your openness and, and transparency of definitely. It's, it's not only about you. It's very personal things which you said. Thank you. And also, I know that you are quite uh, quite active person at LinkedIn, but also maybe you have other people or companies to follow. My number one is Wajanijan University. I love their their research is top notch, and I've always aspired to study in that university for my research. Like it's what I look forward to in the Netherlands. It, that's my number one, because I just have this personal passion for research. Like uh -huh. I'm just the, that research person. I was into business because I want to be able to sustain my research. And I see that university as the one that I've seen all over the world that are doing my number one. And the second uh, company that I, I, I like to follow are the company that are into sustainable organic agriculture. Sustainable organic agriculture, they are doing more than I am doing that I can learn from. I can leverage on their technology. I can leverage on what they are doing right. I can use to build my own small company and become big too in the nearest future. So those are the those are the kind of um, companies I, I like to follow. Okay. It's a one, actually. I want a global one. I want definitely thank you for your time today that you spend this evening, Friday evening with us and uh, spoke about, about your life. Uh, if I will get any information about free business accelerator, 
I will share it with you because I understand that for you it's very important to get this knowledge and to get some network of connections who will help you. So thank you so much, Kafilat, for today. And thank you. I, I wish you good luck. I, I sincerely wish you good luck with your farm and we will stay in touch. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for what you're doing.